Hello and welcome to St. Luke's Anglican Church in Pembroke, Ontario. We're so glad you can join us for this simplified morning prayer coming to you on Sunday, October 16th. We're celebrating this as St. Luke's Sunday, even though officially it's October 18th, this is the nearest Sunday. We'll be celebrating our 14th anniversary as a congregation, 13th in our building. We also will be welcoming Bishop Charlie Masters with us this Sunday and having confirmation, reception, and first communion. It's a great celebration. And if you still have time and can get down to the church and wanna join us for a luncheon on October 16th today, at at around noon uh, after the in-person service at 10 a.m. you'd be most welcome. We now want to just lift this service up to the Lord. Lord, we do thank you that we can worship you at all times and in all places and that we can come together in this way over the internet to glorify you together. May your spirit touch each one of us and draw us to yourself. We pray in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. The invitatory, O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. And so we join in the first half of Psalm 95, known as the Venite. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We'll call on Pastor Janet to read our first lesson for us. Our reading is from the book of Acts, verse 20, chapter 20, sorry, verse 28 to 38. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to admonish everyone with tears. And now I command you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. You yourselves know that these hands ministered to my necessities and to those who were with me. In all things, I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. And there was much weeping on the part of all. They embraced Paul and kissed him, being sorrowful most of all because of the word he had spoken, that they would not see his face again. And they accompanied him to the ship. The word of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Chapter 18 and beginning at the 19th verse. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous 
and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And we do pray, Lord, we come to you not on the basis of our own merit, but because of your mercy and grace. We acknowledge our weakness and desperate need of you. Lord, would you fill us with your Holy Spirit and speak to us by your word. For we pray in the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, this is part two of a double header sermon. <laughs> in person this Sunday, of course, Bishop Charlie will be preaching at our great celebration. But we are continuing this series on the book of Acts. Uh, and we've been following lately St. Paul in his third missionary journey and how he's been at the end of his journey sailing down the western coast of Turkey, making certain stops along the way. And last week we heard about how he stopped in a place called Miletus, uh, which is on the coast, of course. And he called for the elders of the church in Ephesus, uh, an important center of Christianity where Paul had spent over two years in preaching and teaching and building up the church in that place. And he called the leaders to him down to the shore. And it's a very poignant scene. He's giving them his farewell speech, his encouragement to keep the faith and to press on in the work of God, even as he's headed to Jerusalem, where he anticipates and the Holy Spirit has revealed he will be arrested and persecuted. More on that as we work our way through the book of Acts. And so last week we heard about how he's shown himself to be an example, how it wasn't only by his uh, words that Paul preached to the, to the Ephesians, uh, though certainly that, how he made an effort to proclaim the whole counsel of God. That's what we read in verse 27. And we talked last week about how important it is to have the whole Bible and to hold every, the, the truth of God uh, and in all its parts and in context. And then, but also how Paul, by his own example of hard work and care and concern for his people, and a reminder that we too are called to, to give our all for the Lord in whatever way that works for us and looks for us. And it can be really challenging, but we ask for God's grace and help. Well, today, as we continue his speech to those Ephesian elders, we uh, hear a few things. We hear, first of all, a warning. Paul says in verses 20, uh, sorry, uh, first of all, a command. I apologize. In verse 28, he says to pay careful attention to yourselves. In other words, as it says in another scripture, guard your hearts. Keep feeding on God's word and keep praying and keep being aware of where we're prone to fall. Know our weaknesses and be willing to repent quickly and to ask for God's help and help and the full armor of God to stand firm. We have to keep a close eye on ourselves. The scriptures warn that we have to be careful if we think we're standing lest we fall. Let's never be arrogant like the Pharisee in the gospel today, but be more like uh, that tax collector who was humble and looking to God for mercy. To look after ourselves, but also Paul was telling the leaders, but it's true for all of us in our own way, to look after the flock as well. We don't just look after our own hearts, we're meant to look after each other. And of course, church leaders have to preach the gospel faithfully and care for their flock. Please, God, help us to do that. But one another, let's look out and be willing to support and help each other, encourage each other. And if we see some are, are wandering or wavering, look how and pray how we can be a help to them to keep them safe. Because there are dangers. And that's what we hear later in this reading when we hear about a warning. So there's, there's a command, but there's also a warning. Because in verses uh, 29 and 30, Paul says, I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you. 
not sparing the flock. Of course, we know our ultimate enemy is the devil, Satan, who tries to attack us and pull us away from, from God and from fellow Christians. But Paul's also saying that some of the devil's agents are human beings through whom false teaching uh, and and uh, immorality can be sown. And that was true in Paul's day, and it's still true today, that we have to be sure, again, that we're rooted and grounded in the Bible, that we're uh, only teaching that which is according to God's word, and that we are seeking to live it out as well. None of us are going to be perfect, but seeking to live it out. We don't water it down in any way, and we should be careful in testing what we hear and uh, that others are saying. Of course, the world around us is, is moving against Christianity, so we have to stand even more strongly in God's word, be rooted and grounded in God's word, and, and let's look out for ourselves and each other. So there's a command, there's a warning, but there's also a commendation. Paul says in verse 32, that he com is commending you, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among those who are sanctified. You know, when we, when we commend something, we're, we're recommending, we're encouraging. So, so Paul is on the one hand encouraging his listeners and us to the grace of God, to keep turning to God in prayer. He's encouraging and inspiring, exhorting us to keep turning to God's word. But he's also, I think, in a sense, releasing them in his own heart. Remember when Jesus said, Father, into your hands, uh, I commend my spirit, quoting the Old Testament. So there's a kind of a releasing into the Father's hands as well by his prayers. Paul's done all he can. For the, for the Ephesian church. And he's saying, uh, I'm, I'm entrusting you to God. And you know, we need to do that for each other to remember that only Jesus is savior and Lord. And you know, parents, we need to commend into God's hands our children or our grandchildren. Um, other friends and people for whom we're concerned, uh, our church members, anybody that we're in, we're praying for, ultimately we're commending them into God's hands. And I know that Paul, after he continued his, his missionary journey and he went back to Jerusalem, I'm sure he kept the Ephesians in his prayers. Let's keep each other in our prayers. And finally, Paul offers a reminder. He's offered a, a command, a warning, a commendation. And finally, he gives them a reminder, a reminder of his own example. In all things I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak, right? Again, he's not just talked about it. He's set an example. May that be true of us that, you know, we, we, it's not just about us. It's about God and his work and caring in particular for the weak, the weak spiritually or physically, those in need. And then he quotes Jesus. Interestingly enough, when he quotes Jesus, it, we never see this. It is more blessed to give than receive. That's a famous saying. And, uh, and we know that Jesus said it because Paul attributed it to Jesus. We don't see it in the Gospels we have in the Bible. That's a reminder that as John said at the end of his Gospel, Jesus said many other things and did many other things that are not recorded in this book. So one of those things that he did was he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. May we have hearts that are generous and looking for opportunities to bless God and to bless people and to bless those in need. Paul not only commanded it, he lived it. May that be true of us as well. And I love the very touching scene at the end of this reading, having given them a command and, and a warning and then commended them to God and, and to his word of grace and, and having uh, reminded them to continue in the example that he set for them, Paul takes his leave. He, he, uh, there was much weeping on the part of all. They embraced Paul and kissed him. May that genuine love for God and for each other be a hallmark of the church, of you and of me. Thanks be to God for his servant Paul and the example that he set and the word that he's given. And may we continue to um, look after ourselves and the flock of God, to, to be careful uh, of false teaching and, and the, the attacks of the evil one. 
that we're, that we're sure to uh, in, commend each other in prayer uh, to the Lord and to remind each other and to serve each other in love. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. And with those thoughts, then, let's affirm our faith in the, the unchanging truth of the gospel in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And for our prayers today, I'm going to use the form that's uh, in our service of morning prayer. And I want to invite you to be lifting up those things in your heart, those people and situations that you know need the Lord's touch. And so, the Lord be with you. With your spirit. And let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ have mercy upon us. us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we begin by praying, Lord, for those who don't yet know you to come to saving faith, those in our own families or neighborhoods, among our friends. O oh Lord, show your mercy upon us and grant us your salvation. We pray for King Charles III, the royal family and the commonwealth, for our own prime minister, premier. We pray for those uh, involved in municipal elections upcoming this month. O oh Lord, guide those who govern us and lead us in the way of justice and truth. We pray today for all those recently ordained, Shane and Ben in Ottawa, and uh, in particular, Glenn Musso, ordained here at St. Luke's yesterday as a deacon. Your blessing on them. We pray your blessing on Bishop Charlie as we thank you for his many years of faithful leadership and ministry. Bless him and Judy in retirement. Bless Bishop Dan and Catherine and their family as he becomes our diocesan bishop. Please lead our upcoming synod uh, for our Anglican network in Canada. And for all leaders and all Christians, Clothe your ministers with righteousness and let your people sing with joy. We pray, Lord, for all those who are in particular need, struggling with COVID, illness, dementia, facing surgeries or recovering from surgeries. In particular, we pray for those on our parish prayer list and prayer chain. For those who are struggling emotionally or those who are grieving, for those who are lonely. Lord, send your mercy. We pray for any particular individuals on our heart. O oh Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. We continue to pray, Lord. Long for peace in Ukraine and Russia. And Lord, we know there are many other civil wars and conflicts and people who suffer from terrorism and violence. And so we pray, give peace in our time, O Lord, and defend us by your mighty power. Lord, we pray for those who are poor and in need in any way, in our own country and community, 
and around the world. Stir your people to generosity and to loving service. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Lord, we pray for those being confirmed today. We pray for Paul and Jim and Eva, for Jane and Wendy Lou, and also for Jennifer as she has received, for Magissi as she receives her First Communion. Lord, we pray for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit on them and on us as a congregation and on all your people. Lord, continue to work in us that we might be, have teachable spirits, repent whenever it is necessary, and continue to grow in your grace and truth and love. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. I want to conclude the prayers today with the Collect for St. Luke. Almighty God, you called your servant Luke to be an evangelist and physician of the soul. Grant that by the wholesome medicine of the doctrine he taught, all the diseases of our souls may be healed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May it be so. Well, thank you, Pastor Janet, and thank you, everyone, for joining us in this service and all who've assisted in any way at St. Luke's, especially with this wonderful and busy weekend that we're having here, uh, and a heartfelt thanks to Bishop Charlie for his leadership and ministry. Um, many things upcoming. We have a lot of our regular programs that are continuing, Bible studies, grief share, youth group on Friday nights. I uh, do want to highlight a couple of things coming up on Friday night, October 28th. We have a potluck supper at 5.30, and if you can join us, bring whatever you want to bring for dinner. Uh, it's for all ages. If uh, you can't make it for dinner but still want to join us later, around about 6.30 or so, we'll start a games night. People bring in board games or uh, cards or whatever, and we'll just have a night of fun and fellowship. That's Friday, October 28th here at the church. On Sunday, October 30th, we'll celebrate All Saints Sunday. Uh, those who have lost loved ones and would like to bring a photo to the church um, that we can place as a reminder of, of the great company of saints, you're welcome to do that and we'll remember them in our, in our Sunday services. We'll also have another special guest, retired Bishop Trevor Walters, a bishop in Western Canada who has been an editor of our new Anic history book that he'll be bringing along with him. So he'll be here at both services those on Sunday, October 30th, and he'll be bringing copies of the history book. If anyone would like one, uh, you'd be great. Uh, you're welcome to their cost uh, just $25. They're great books. I've read them. Uh, so uh, if you'd like to join us for Bishop Trevor. Our Synod will be the first week in November. And then there's other special things in November, but I'll tell you about those next Sunday. In the meantime, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lift up his countenance upon you and give you his blessing, peace and joy. May he lead you and keep you in all, his, all good ways in his love and grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next time. God bless. <laughs>